Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. Uh, it's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as a, a paint business entrepreneur, uh, a lover of coding science, to answer any of your questions live here. So. Uh, today we're doing a little bit of an early show. Uh, I'll tell you why in a little bit. Uh, I am sitting here, uh, this is not a juvenile detention center, this is uh, a dog kennel. Uh, and I'm gonna do a quick uh, job site walkthrough for you today. Uh, I'm also uh, gonna talk about summer systems for profitability. So uh, Ask a Painter Live, like I said, is a weekly live Facebook show. It's brought to you uh, in partnership with the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. Uh, they are the Painting Contractors Association. Uh, they are the largest group of the finest contractors, paint business entrepreneurs in the world. So Juliano Alcantara, my friend, Bautarde, uh, to you, Russ Perry, thank you for watching. So I'm gonna start off today uh, giving you a quick job site walkthrough, and then I'm gonna lay out uh, uh, the, the contractor question of the week, which is uh, what system should we have in place uh, for summer and spring when things start ramping up and going crazy. So I'm gonna take you through here. I think we have some dogs coming through, so I'll try to be respectful of that. But uh, so basically we're going head to toe on this uh, project here. Let's see a dog going out for a walk there. Uh, we're spraying all the ductwork here, uh, and we're using, uh, let's see, Scuff-X, Benjamin Moore Scuff-X. Uh, you can see that beautiful finish on those ducts there. We're spraying those. Uh, all the walls in this kennel are going to be done with Benjamin Moore Scuff-X. This is the first time I've used the product, and we're using it uh, large scale here. And I have to tell you, um, I am so impressed uh, by that product. It is hard as nails. So now I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what it'll do on uh, some uh, woodwork, doors, things like that. So you can see, uh, I'm gonna try not to mess my uh, clothes up here, but uh, we're using Sherwin-Williams DTM oil on all these uh, commercial doors and frames there. Uh, Chris Shank, thank you for watching, buddy. Dean Cut as usual. Uh, like I said, Benjamin Moore Scuff X on all the walls. And we're going to be prepping and uh, painting all these floors with uh, Sherwin Williams Treadplex here. So, um, yeah, very, oh, you can see Aaron, one of my craftsmen. His job got postponed today, so I sent him over here. So, lucky you, you get to enamel door frames with oil today. <laughs> yeah, Aaron's a go getter, man. He's one of my favorites. So, all right, we'll take a peek. We have a whole pile of apprentices back here, putting that scuff X on the walls. How do you guys like that stuff so far? It's good. Yeah. 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 Compared to the Valspar, cover well, goes on nice. Real good. Awesome. Well. All right. Let's see. We got. I think we got some more people hiding back here. Oh yeah. A couple of apprentices back in the cages here. I assume you guys will let them out sooner or later. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're, we're going to be walking through this. There's John, my head of apprenticeship right there. Hey, John, you want to, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab you in a couple minutes for, okay. for this. I'm actually going to show you one of the systems that we use. So uh, in laying out, uh, I should, maybe I should go through uh, the PDCA contractor question of the week. So uh, basically, uh, the PDCA, uh, they get a whole ton of questions about uh, paint business entrepreneurship, uh, coding science, things like that. And uh, they forward some on to me to use for this show. Uh, and one of the questions was, uh, Nick, what, uh, what type of system should you have in place uh, for the spring and summer onslaught of work? So uh, in thinking about this, uh, I've, I've divided uh, my advice into uh, two business sizes uh, or, or two things. Uh, if you're a smaller business, if you're still in the field, if you've got a couple people working for you or if you're a single man shop, I have some advice for you there. Or if you're a larger business with many crews, uh, lots of systems in place, I have some there. So number one, for the small business, uh, three things. Uh, you've got to have your coding systems in place. Uh, you've got to have your, uh, you've got to keep up with your logistics, the phone calls, the emails, uh, estimates, things like that. And you've got to make time for family. Those are the big things. Uh, and I'll go back and expound on these things, but uh, for the larger businesses, um, what I find myself getting into now is safety. You gotta have safety systems in place when you have that many people out there using vehicles, doing stuff on houses. Uh, you gotta have excellent project handoff. So there's usually a difference between um, 
who estimates, who sells the project, and who actually does the project or manages it. So you gotta have an awesome system for handing that off. And as we all know, there, there's a whole bunch of very specific wishes from our clients for each project, and those have to be all met. Uh, and then uh, for, uh, for large businesses too, you have to have um, rain day contingencies. And uh, I know this is probably a little more specific to the upper Midwest, things like that. Arizona, you guys probably don't uh, suffer from this too much, or Texas. But um, I've, uh, I've been spending a lot of time working on rain day contingencies so that when you have 10 to 20 people in the field, if you lose a day, you're not losing all of that uh, efficiency or production all at once. So, all right, let's go back to the small business side. Um, you gotta have your coding systems in place. If there's any question about what type of product you should use, how you should use it, where it should be used on a house, you gotta put your time in uh, into the repetitions of that and get it down. You gotta have a system that you can rely on so when you make a promise to your client and say, yeah, this is, this is how I paint your house, this is the prep I do, this is the coating I do, you have to be able to look them in the eye and they have to feel uh, that they can trust you with that. If there's any questions for you, about systems or what products to use yet. Keep trying them out, get a bunch of stuff under your belt so you can confidently tell homeowners what you do, how you're gonna do it, and, and what they can expect. Um, logistics. Um, for me, uh, back when I was uh, still in the field or I just had a couple people, the struggle was, you know, I really wanna bang out some work, but also I'm watching my voicemails pile up and this and that, so you gotta systematize all this stuff. So what I would do is, Every day, uh, if we'd start at six in the morning on an exterior, uh, I would work for two hours until 8 a.m. with the rest of my uh, people. At 8 a.m., I would sit down and basically answer every email, every voicemail until they were depleted, and then I would put my phone back down again and get back to work for the rest of the day. And this got me through probably eight years uh, of, that, of stuff that way. Um, and it was fine, it, it worked out really well. Everybody liked the, uh, the phone calls, the voicemails, the texts, this and that. And I found that you know there's a little bit of lag time sometimes when somebody would call, but you know it really didn't matter. Uh, but make sure you're keeping up on those because I find that typically there's about a mm, one to three month lag between first contact from a client, potential client, and when we actually do the work. So for the summer, if you, <laughs> if you take June, July, and August and stop answering your phone, August or uh, September, October, November are going to be completely dry. You would have not laid that groundwork. You wouldn't have those estimates out there. I know it's painful. Um, I, I used to go six in the morning to four uh, p.m. Uh, physically laboring with my crew, uh, and then I would go out until I ran out of estimates at night, usually eight or nine o'clock, doing that. And you know what? I wanted to grow a business, so it's kind of what you do. Um, but uh, you know, it's not to, not to go on forever that way too. That's uh, you got to build it to a certain point and then keep on moving. So, but keep up with those calls. You have to do that, and this is the main reason why people run out of work uh, in fall and winter there because they haven't been doing those estimates in summer uh, to build that base for uh, for there and family time. I mean, I know it's not a business system, but uh, again, you know, I just laid out my my old schedule how I used to do from four in the morning until six in the morning. I used to work on my business six to four. I used to paint and then four to eight or four to nine, I used to do estimates. What you didn't hear in there was any time for family. And uh, even when I was home, I basically just did one of these. I fell right on the floor and immediately started snoring until I woke up the next day. And then on the weekends, you know, obviously, hey, I'm gonna make a call here or there. I'm gonna, oh, it's just one estimate. They can only do it on Saturday. And pretty soon, it sort of broke up your family time. So. You really want to be intentional uh, with your family time. Set some constraints on your time. If, uh, if you're working eight to four all summer, make sure that you're touching base with the family in the morning, seeing kids uh, when they wake up, maybe doing some breakfast with them, head off to work, uh, have some dinner with your family, and then head out for estimates if you're still doing evening estimates, things like that. But touching base every day and, and taking time for them is a big thing. And then uh, on the weekends, uh, I know it's difficult uh, for all of us uh, paint business entrepreneurs starting off, but uh, what, you're, you're, what you're doing there on Friday is looking at Saturday and Sunday, that's two days of production, what the heck? But, you know, take the time for your family. We all should. And uh, it's one of those things where it's, it's sort of unsatisfying to hear because it's, uh, it's not a business system. But honestly, it's, uh, if you want, if you want a, a happy life, a free life, uh, disciplining yourself with that is, is a very important thing. So, okay, for larger businesses, uh, safety is a big system that you should have in place uh, for profitability. Uh, project handoff is probably the number one. And then rain day contingencies for capturing all that uh, all that uh, um, 
uh, possible work that's just bad so or for bad days. So, okay, number one, safety. Uh, we were going to do company-wide safety training this week. Uh, it is miserable here in Minnesota. It's, it's the start of April, it, uh, 25 mile an hour winds today, 15 degrees, it's snowing, it snowed all week, we got a ton of snow, and it is miserable. Normally we go out uh, to my farm and we practice safety on some of the uh, outbuildings. Uh, we'll practice roof safety, ladder safety, pressure washer stuff, personal safety, all that stuff. We have a very strict, rigorous sort of safety program that everybody gets put through every year. We do updated safety training throughout the year and they sign off on it. And it's all in our employee uh, resource guides or handbooks too. Uh, so it, it's a very important thing. And now, especially when, uh, you know, uh, there's 12 of us now, um, I would like to be at 18 this summer. If you have that many vans, that many ladders, that many people out there doing stuff, you want them to know that safety is your number one concern. Because you can be plugging along, plugging along, plugging along, and all of a sudden, if, if there's a very, very catastrophic injury on one of your job sites, that can basically take up all the time in your business for the uh, entire rest of the year. Uh, it's gonna make it's gonna make you not sleep at night. It's gonna change the way you do things. And so for maybe half a day or a full day of safety training for my entire company, uh, not only are they gaining the specific knowledge uh, on how to be safe, but they're feeling it for me that you know number one, uh, we have to do world class work. Number two, we have to make happy clients. And number three, none of this matters unless we do it safe. So safety is a huge, huge thing for me, and it's sort of the underlying thing that it's the basic low standard that we have to comply with in order to even begin to do work out in the field. So I'm gonna grab, um, I'm gonna grab John real quick, and I'm gonna actually show you my project handoff. Hey John, you ready? All right, so John's on his way. I'm gonna actually show you uh, how we hand off projects, and uh, it's uh, it's something that we came up with in our company. It's not, I mean, nothing is uh, nothing is groundbreaking, but uh, you want to show them a jump sheet? Yeah. It's a it's a thing that we call a jump sheet. Uh, we have completely Googleized our business uh, over the last couple months. So basically, all my guys have smartphones, and uh, you want to tilt it down a little bit. Is it all? Uh, it's not showing up all that. Oh, we'll get a little closer. Okay, so this will all be a mirror image, but basically, you want to scrunch that down so you can see the whole page. So basically, uh, in our Google Drive, uh, we have one of these for every project, and it lists the, uh, the client's name, the address, the phone number, and it lists every, every single... Um, oh, yeah, light's weird, sorry. There we go. Uh, it lists every single area to be completed, it lists the type of coding, the color, and then any notes, and then in the bottom you can see that big red block, that's, uh, that's where the change orders start, down there. Uh, and I fill these out, this one I did not, because we did color consultation same day as the project. You're actually filling this out right now, aren't you? Yep. So, yep. so yeah, this is the, this is the thing where uh, most of the time my guys have never seen a job site. Uh, they've never seen the house. They get one of these, and at our weekly production meeting, we actually sit down for an hour and we go through every job in the week. We look at these as a whole company, right? Yep. And we basically say, does anybody have any questions? You guys know what to do. And um, we, you guys just show up at a house, never meeting the homeowner, never seeing the house, and we've never really had utter confusion from nope. this. So nope. project handoff is pretty good. And uh, I guess the biggest thing, uh, the biggest fail point of project handoff is all the thousand little concerns yeah. that the homeowner has. Like, exactly. we have wallpaper here, so please make sure you cut a straight line. We have a crazy dog. Yep. I don't know about this color verify. I mean, what, right. what are the, do, can you remember any other very specific? No. Uh, special start times, garage codes, yep. I mean, all that all that sort of stuff. Yep. So but usually the jump sheet's all filled out and ready to go for us, so. Awesome, yeah. So we're, we're getting that down to a system, and every week we actually change those, because our, our system is in, our, our business is in such growth that we're basically just adding to that and refining it every week, which is kind of a cool process. So uh, any other thoughts on jump sheets from your end? You know, because I, I, I bang these out in my basement, nope. you know, and I uh, <laughs> I send them out to you guys, and you guys are driving around trying to figure out all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, no, they're uh, they're well they're well uh, uh, thought out, and everything's on there for us, so awesome. And yeah. this, is gonna, this is gonna be even more important in summer, because there's even more specific wishes. Right. Don't oh, yeah. trim this bush. Do trim this one. Yeah. There's woodpecker holes here, so we're gonna really put this thing through the paces this summer because there's gonna be a, probably a list of 20 specifics for right. each job. So, yep. all right, thanks, John. Yeah.
Oh, Araldo, Bartarde, my friend. Um, yeah, so Project Handoff. Uh, in, uh, what's funny is that uh, Project Handoff is way easier with a small business. Uh, when I was still on site, uh, I did the project handoff. I would just verbally communicate all that stuff. But now when we have you know four or five crews out there and uh, hopefully six or seven this summer, uh, that's gonna be utterly important to do. And uh, the larger the business, the more, um, the more struggle I think people have with the project handoff because um, right now it's, it's still fairly easy because I'm out there selling the jobs, I create these, I've spoken to the homeowners. Uh, you, can, you can see where the added complexity comes in if if the call gets taken by a receptionist, hands it off to a salesman, salesman goes out there, does it, gives it to a project manager, and then the project manager has to give it to a crew. So uh, you can see where, you know, it's like a game of telephone where something's going to get stored on the way down. So uh, having a system and drilling that is a very, very uh, important thing here. So, uh, and I'll go through some questions here. And uh, uh, if you guys are, uh, uh, the kindest thing you could do for a show like this is to share it. Uh, if you guys would, there's just a share button at the bottom. Uh, click uh, share, write a post, and just hit share. You don't even have to write anything in there. Let's get as many paint business entrepreneurs, homeowners who have questions on here uh, and take care of that. And last thing is rain day contingencies. <coughs> in, uh, in, in May, uh, and uh, in October, we get tons of dew, tons of rain, tons of moisture, things like that here in the upper Midwest. So it's very, very important that we capture a bunch of days. There's probably, I want to guess between 15 and 20 days where we have some weird kind of dew issues that hang around. You know, it's, it's 49 degrees and the dew stays on the houses till one in the afternoon, which is insane. Or we have some, some odd days where, you know, my, my worst nightmare days are when it's 40% chance of rain all day. And those days turn out to be either bluebird days or it pours all day. So what I do, uh, the way that I've sort of worked around this is, uh, is a people management issue. Um, so I, uh, I, I get a whole bunch of uh, uh, clients uh, who want interior work and I, um, I get their estimates done, I make sure the colors are in and I basically proof them that, uh, or brief them on our rain day policy where listen, if you want some uh, rain day stuff done in Minnesota in the summer, we sort of do it on a rain day contingency because we have to use every nice day. So they're basically Johnny on the spot, and I, I get the people who, uh, if they if they want a definite date, I can definitely give them that later in the year, or possibly with my interior crew in the summer. That's fine, but if they if they want to do Johnny on the spot, I basically put them on my contingency list, where they're briefed, where I text them. I'll try to give them at least uh, 24 hours notice, uh, usually between 12 and 24 hours, where I can text or call and basically say, hey, listen, it's two o'clock on a Monday afternoon. Tuesday, it looks like a complete rain day. Can I send a crew or two over to your house? And surprisingly, people are willing uh, to do that if you can get to them quickly. So again, it's it's not necessarily a um, a something that you solve on a spreadsheet. It's more of a people management issue and and sort of being honest with them about summer schedules like that. And I think uh, last year we only had uh, I think we were running ten people last summer. Um, we only had one day that, that we had unexpected work stoppage. Everything else I was able to work around. So it was, uh, I consider that a huge success, especially because you know, the year previous I had one or two people. We went to 10 people and we really didn't lose any, uh, any of that. And, and surprisingly, if, you, if you're very honest with your homeowners, they're more than happy to do stuff like that. So, um, okay, I wonder if there's any, let's go through some questions here. All right, thank you everybody for watching here. I do appreciate it, especially my uh, Brazilian Pintors down there. Thank you guys so much. Russ Perry, uh, Paul Rafferty. Hey Nick, just finished my decking. Have a great, oh, that's awesome. And uh, send some pictures too. And if uh, anybody wants to go dual live with me too, you can pop up if you got a question or you got a comment or you got a job site you wanna show me, a project you wanna show me, uh, request uh, to go live with me here. And you can do a quick couple minute thing there. Mark Johnston, my historic restoration consultant friend. Uh, PDCA, thank you so much. Yeah, this is a really this is a really interesting project here. This sort of combines a lot of what we do, where it's a people issue because uh, this is a new owner of a kennel. They have dogs coming in and out, as you saw, and this is a working uh, this is a working sort of place. So not only are we doing super high quality kind of industrial finishes here, but we have to work around the dogs, work around everything else, and uh, it's it's fun. It's a, it's a local one here too in New Prague, so this is good. So Chris Shank, as usual, thank you for watching. 
uh, Dean Cud as usual, uh, James Gilbert, uh, ScuffX. Uh, James, I'd be interested to hear what you use ScuffX on, or uh, if anybody else has used ScuffX on, you know, metal doorways or uh, some industrial trim or things like that. I'd be curious to see what your uh, what your impression is, but. Uh, they've been doing some rooms here, some kennel rooms, and I've been scratching at it. I've been uh, braiding it and stuff. It is an amazingly hard product. I'm very, very impressed. I can't wait to start. Uh, I can't wait to try it on a uh, drywall project, too, to see how that works. So, uh, Cesar Garcia from Seattle, thank you for watching. Uh, got some Scuff X to try out. Dean, let me know what. Uh, what you're using that on there, I'd be curious. And, and I'd like to see some finish shots, you know, if you guys can give some uh, down the wall shots and kind of show me how uh, ScuffX is working for you. So. Just give me five minutes, would you, Dylan? No worries. Uh, Daniel, uh, how you doing? Uh, Philip, good morning. Uh, Philip's down in uh, Iowa, I believe. Uh, it's been fun kind of, uh, you know, uh, getting to know you over uh, Facebook like that, too. You run a really interesting business down there. So, uh, da, da, da. oh, yeah, a bunch of people watching today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Let's see what else we got here. Russ Perry, thank you, sir. Daniel Petrolak. Uh, every Sunday. Paul Rafferty, Chernick. I work on the occasional Saturday, but on the whole, I don't work on the weekend family time. And you just sort of have to. And uh, uh, Toots, my wife, is a very good... Uh, we talked about this actually on last week's episode. She was my guest. Which, by the way, everybody, thank you so much for watching. That was one, one of my most watched episodes ever. I think we had, you know, five or 6,000 people who had viewed it uh, that day. So it was uh, it was an amazing one. And I hope it gave you a little glimpse into, uh, to, into what it's like here in uh, my world. So... See what else we got here. Araldo Bartardi, my friend. Josh Boutwell, he likes it, must be talking about ScuffX. Uh, Philip, I'm digging how you do the Google Drive for each of your projects. Um, I wish I could uh, pop it up here. I'll have to bring another iPhone or an iPad and show you, but uh, you know, in. Uh, in, uh, in, in, in rapid expansion, uh, it's tempting to uh, go on and get Estimate Rocket or something else, and that will help, but I wanted something nimble, because I didn't know what system I wanted to get onto, and uh, for bang for the buck, I don't know that anybody can do better than Google Drive. It's, uh, it takes a little more manual input. It's not gated as well as other systems where you have to do certain things, but it is free, it is powerful, and uh, I, I know some people with some very, very large profitable businesses that can use that. Uh, and it's a very, very effective tool. And it's free, and every one of my people has it. Uh, and everybody kind of knows how to use it, you know. Uh, I started off maybe three or four months, and I had never used it before. And now uh, it's, uh, it's like old hat to me. It's, uh, it's such a wonderful thing. And uh, I can just see a huge um, expansion uh, going on in that. So, And uh, one of these days, I'll take you guys through my Google Drive and kind of show you. Uh, I have... Um, I have uh, uh, two different parts to it, like a, a walled off area for me and my business, and then the uh, outward facing company side where everybody gets on there. So, um, Lou Millinghausen, uh, cool stuff, Nick. These documents uh, are able to be edited by your employees. Can they update? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? One of our processes actually is the last 20 minutes of every day uh, between about 3.40 and 4 p.m., my crew leaders are supposed to sit down, take out their phones, and update those jump sheets because the goal of that, oh, and one other thing I should mention about Google Drive is it's live updated. So I can have my phone out and I can be working on a jump sheet and then John, my head of apprenticeship, can be working on the same jump sheet and it'll show our changes in real time. So we can be sitting in the same room or across the country uh, making changes in real time and it does that. So it's unlike Microsoft Excel where you have to do a version, you have to share it, you have to delete the old one or update it and do that and it can get confusing this one it automatically saves too so you can just bang away at something shut your computer automatically save ready to go so um, but yes they update them daily and uh, because I track some metrics weekly in my business the the weekly drill is oh Lou you want to come on here let's let's see if you want to let's see what Lou's Every Friday night, I sit down and I calculate what we actually produce for the week, the number of hours, the number of revenue per hours, and the total revenue. And when I go through Friday night, 4.30, I look at those jump sheets and everything is there. The hours work, the coding is used, any special notes, any change orders. And I can sit there from anywhere in the world and basically see what my business did. And it's all free, which is, which is really, really awesome. And most of it's fairly intuitive, too. So, all right, let's see who else is watching here. 
Uh, Lou, no problem. Uh, Lou, do you ever run into Johnny on the spot overlap issues? Johnny on the spot takes more days than our rainy. Uh, here's here's how I do this. Uh, I do this. Uh, I do this. Lou, Lou, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going today? Good, man. How are you? Good, good. So, what's uh, what are you up to today? Um, getting ready to put some pants. Oh, nectar of the gods. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's a it's not a bad trim paint. But our normal trim paint go to is Ruscat, uh, for latex. Yep, and we just wanted something with a harder finish here. So uh, I really like it. I've sprayed yeah, it a and, bunch. Uh, I... Go ahead. Nice, nice, and uh, you know you feel that. Uh, how's the finish look to you? Do you feel it? Uh, it gets hard enough, and the finish is something of a high enough quality. Yeah, actually, I think that the previous coat in this house was Duralamel, the old uh, Fenmore oil, and I think it's pretty comparable. Nice. And uh, do you, did you have to do any uh, priming before the advance, or do you just go and right advance over the other stuff? We scuffed it up pretty good. Oh, man, I got some paint on my face. Yep. Uh, we scuffed it up pretty good, <laughs> but uh, other than that, oh, I got the paint all over <laughs> So no, that that's uh, awesome, yeah, and, and it's bonding. That's wonderful, well. man. I, so uh, I put a little bit of the uh, let's say I have extender in here. As well. Just uh, I find that one downside of advance is I think it does rip a little bit. It, I find I I find runs sometimes in areas where I'm not used to seeing runs, and. Uh, the extender gives me the ability to go back and fix that. Oh, that's awesome. And one of the things that I noticed, and, and uh, you know, the, when, when you find runs in places you don't normally find, and even like a half an hour, 45 minutes later, to me that's a sign of a good open time on, a, on an enamel. So what I found with Advance that's unique compared to other things is, you know, when you do the uh, side casing of a door frame, you'll, you know, you obviously do the side casing, side casing, and then do the front. A half an hour later, some of those drips, they actually come down and they migrate over the front like that. And that's sort of unique to advance. But it's nice that it's got such open time that you can come back and actually brush it out without, like, the crater ridges being there. Exactly. And I feel like the extender helps me just a, just enough to not create those little crater ridges. I'm not – I'm not if I'm adjusting – being a horizontal <laughs> cameraman right now. So. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, do you – Go ahead. Oh, uh, do you have a favorite brush uh, for, for putting on that advance? Yep. Where do I go with it? <clears throat> I'm uh, a big fan of Picasso. Myself. Uh, Picasso and Proform also makes a brush called the Blaze, which looks a lot like this, but the bristles are more similar to um, – like the Wooster Ultra Pro firms, and uh, I think they hold pretty well, and we get really crisp lines with them. Awesome, awesome, that's cool, man. Um, any, uh, I assume you're probably doing a lighter color over another lighter color. Uh, have you run into any uh, color coverage issues with Advance uh, versus other enamels? No, we went just slightly lighter in the existing trim. All this trim is done in here, but um, hmm. I'm just going to up on a window right now. Uh, but this is Sterling Williams Alabaster, and uh, we oh yeah, a, we took a uh, like a shutter to the store, and I uh, just kind of found the closest match. But covered nice. very well. So how's how's business going for you, Lou? Starting to get busy, man. Definitely starting to get busy. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. Yeah, every uh, with the, with the weather getting nicer too, we're all kind of putting our helmets on and uh, preparing ourselves, you know. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So we kind of slowed back at the end of last year and kind of starting to slowly grow back now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, man. Uh, any other uh, any other things you want to uh, want to cover here? Otherwise, I'm I'm sort of getting to the end of the show. I'm going to run through a few more questions and uh, then uh, head out for the weekend. Yeah. No, man. No, it was good to talk with you. I, I'm definitely curious to learn more about these Google Docs and. Um, I like your pass-off idea. We do something very similar with notes, 
Um, but uh, it seems like he, that's basically a two seat in that corner, right? Yep. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to take a look at it. Absolutely. And you know what, maybe uh, in the next week or two, I'll, uh, I'll just give people a run through of my Google Drive and kind of just show them how I do sort of like a free, quick and easy, here's how to run your paint business. And, and actually, in like two weeks, I learned about Google Drive, and then my entire business was running on it. So if I can figure it out, you know, that, that gives hope for the rest of us, right? <laughs> awesome, man. I uh, appreciate that. Hey, anytime, man. Hey, Lou, thank you so much for going live with me here, man. Let's stay in contact and have a good weekend. Yeah, you do the same, buddy. Take care. Okay. Let's see. Uh, uh, Lou also asked, uh, do you ever run into where Johnny on the spot takes a little more time? And that's just one of those things where I've had enough reps with, uh, especially interior painting, where it's a known quantity. And we just pick off a day size job and do that. And you just got to know your numbers, uh, know your production rates, and then, uh, you know, go from there. Uh, let's see who else we got. James Gilbert, are you scuff X on a summer rental on the Jersey Shore and the walls? That's probably a good idea. It cleans up well, I suppose, after the uh, wild summer there. So, uh, Howell Ferreira, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, always uh, thank you for watching. We love following the Pintors down there in Brazil. Uh, Marlon Heckbart, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, Fernando, I never can follow your lives. Always working during this time. And, you know, it's one of those things, I, uh, Fernando, uh, you know, uh, Bombia, my friend, I always struggle with, you know, what time of the day to do this stuff because uh, I really want to keep the evenings free for, uh, you know, when I do have the occasional estimate or family. I definitely want to keep the weekends free, but I'm trying to figure out, uh, you know, when, when during the day would be best for this stuff. Friday seems like a day where if somebody's going to take it easy on a job site or get some things done in the office, that seems good. And uh, it's noon central here in Minnesota, kind of uh, over my lunch time. So if anybody has any suggestions, uh, if you'd like it, I used to actually do this stuff at like seven uh, or eight in the morning on a Friday morning. And uh, that worked well for the uh, Brazilian Pintors. Uh, I see, I think there's about a six hour delay with us. So that caught them, you know, midday. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I just, you're not going to get everybody. So. All right, let's see here how we're doing. Oh, Annie Newton, good painter friend of mine there. Thank you for watching. Uh, James Gilbert, XIM Extender. Absolutely. Uh, there's a whole bunch. I, I'm getting to like uh, those products. I've, I've been using them for about 10 years, you know, whether it's the Floetrol, uh, the XIM, or uh, actually Benjamin Moore's uh, sort of extender, version of extender is actually pretty good when I use it all my exterior paints. So, uh, Danny Airy, thank you for watching. Ronnie, my interpreter friend. There you go. Uh, Ronnie Carlos de Jesus Santos, one of my best friends down there in Brazil. So thank you so much for watching here. Uh, bom dia, my friend, and uh, obrigado to all my uh, pintors down there. Uh, uh, you guys are doing some amazing things. And if you guys, uh, the American painters, if you haven't uh, explored the world of the Brazilian painter, uh, just find a couple of the Facebook groups down there. Um, there's a couple of them uh, that are very, very populated with very enthusiastic people. Uh, one of them has 100,000 members. And I think in the United States, I think one of our painters chat rooms, you know, has 15,000. And that's a monster. Uh, down there, they have uh, 100,000 people and they're growing rapidly. So it's, it's amazing uh, what they're doing down there. So, all right. So the reason for the early show today uh, I'm going to let my apprentices get back to work here. I know everybody kind of uh, is looking over their shoulder when I come around, but uh, uh, I'm actually flying to New York City today uh, to meet a friend of mine from Germany. Uh, his name is Timo Ziegenbein, uh, and we actually met in Afghanistan uh, back when uh, the war was going on there. Uh, he was a German soldier. I was uh, obviously an American soldier, and uh, our tents were right next to each other. And uh, we met each other there, and basically every year since we've been getting together, uh, he usually is nice enough to come here. Uh, he's got a pretty awesome life. Uh, I believe he's an engineer. Uh, he's actually in New York right now. I'm flying to meet him later, but uh, he is a, uh, he's a pretty impressive dude, uh, very, very smart, and he's also a world-class triathlete, which is always uh, intimidating. But uh, he's, uh, he's a very intimidating dude. Uh, he's, a, he's a tall fella, and uh, being a world-class triathlete, he is uh, stringy and uh, very strong, and uh, thank God we're on the same side, because if you think back to World War II, you know, a mere 70 or 80 years ago, we would have been on opposite sides, and that would have been the scariest dude you'd ever want to run into, 
And uh, it's, it, it gives me a lot of hope that, you know, we can be on the same side, uh, fighting the same war, uh, and uh, doing things together now. So my hopes is that in another 70 or 80 years, my kids can go to Afghanistan and have the same camaraderie with Afghanis as, you know, Germans do with me now. And that would be a very, very... Uh, fun thing here. So uh, I'm getting ready to do that. I'm going to go back home, make sure I got all my toiletries and I'm heading out today. And uh, thank you everybody for watching. And Lou, thank you so much for going live with me. I love, love, love going live with people. So everybody have a good day, have a good weekend. Uh, let's all work together to raise the standards of our industry. Uh, we're at the precipice of a huge change in the contracting world, not just the painter's world. And there's going to be people who are leading the way. There's going to be people who will gladly hop on board. And there's going to be people who are just left behind who have no interest. So, oh, Ronnie's on here. Let's see if Ronnie wants to go live. Then we'll get out of here. But that's, uh, there's a, there, we're on the edge of a big change here. And uh, actually, everybody in Brazil is going through the same thing, too. So uh, I have a lot of hopes that in the next couple of years here, there's going to be some major, major changes to our industry in not only quality of work, a dignity of work, but also in the efficiency. So, hey, Ronnie, hey. my friend, how are you, sir? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. <laughs> I'm sorry to be born near the that time. Know. I, I couldn't let you go. <laughs> No problem. Hey, for for those of you who don't know, Ronnie is one of the coolest human beings I know. He's a uh, he works at a trade school down there in Brazil. Uh, you're a trainer at a trade school, and he is my interpreter uh, for uh, Portuguese, which is really awesome. So Ronnie and I have become great friends over the last year or two, and uh, he's always uh, he's always good to talk to. So what are you up to down there? Um, uh, I'm just acting in lunch time now. I'm just a quick move to to show you. So it's time to. <laughs> Take a quick lunch and go back to work. So I have a just a few minutes away, but I couldn't let you go and 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 explain something very important. Uh, every single time that you go to the live shows, and there's loads of Brazilians watching you, and most of them, they are very influent people here in Brazil, who is, is, is who have the same way of of feel uh, like us to to share the knowledge and to put the things forward, to get the space in front of the camera and try to do their best. This is very important for you to know as well, Nick. That's wonderful. And, you know, we've been talking over the last year or two here of, you know, it, it, it's been amazing for me to get to know you and all the rest of the Pintors down there because we take for granted here in the United States that we can get Purdy and Wooster brushes and Graco and Titan sprayers and all this stuff. And, you know, when we when I see you guys working down there, I see the, the quality of work that you're turning out with the subpar equipment. You just don't have access to the same things that we have at the same prices we have. And uh, I, I really feel for you guys down there, but you guys are muscling through it. It's just an amazing thing to watch. Yeah, that, that's it, Nick. I, I'll try to explain Portuguese for them as well because it would be great for them to get all the points, okay? Absolutely. Ok. Então, pessoal, é, eu entrei rapidinho aqui na live com, com o Nick. Né? Tô até na hora de almoço nossa aqui, já são 8 da manhã, 7, 8 da manhã, alguma coisa assim lá. E até eu deixei para ele saber que muitos dos brasileiros né, que estão é, assistindo as lives aqui são é, assíduos, né, frequentes, com o, que ele, com o que ele passa, com o que ele transmite, o que é algo muito interessante, porque normalmente ele me pergunta qual é o tipo de público que busca as lives dele aqui no Brasil. E eu falo que são pessoas que realmente vão para frente das câmeras, colocam a cara a tapa aqui, com poucas ferramentas que nós temos, nós tentamos fazer algo tão bom quanto aqueles que possuem boas ferramentas que nós temos, né? Ok, Nick. Hey, and you know what, over the last year, I, I, I think we've sort of made like this promise to each other that, you know, we're going to both work together. Uh, you have an awesome group, uh, the, the moderator group down there, but uh, we're going to have, you know, you got Ivan, you got Juliano, all the rest of the people down there. Uh, we've made a promise to each other that we're basically going to do whatever we can from across there to improve the standards of all the painters in the entire world here. And it's a lofty thing, but if somebody's going to do it, it's going to start with you guys. It's probably going to involve us. What we can do to make everybody's life better. Yeah, that's it, Nick. That's Nick. Uh, there's, there's a person, a very important person watching us right now. He's straight from Austria. Her name is Lisa Janish. That's one of the person that I was talking to you about the competition. She's a national competition of uh, national co national champion of competition, painter and decorating competition from Austria, and the best best the best painter ever 
in the Euro Skills competition, the best of Europe. She was awarded for that. She's just an amazing. I'm I'm trying to get a live a live streaming with her, with her as well. She's watching us now. Liz, that's that's a message for you. That's the kind of stuff that we are about to do with you, Lisa. And this is, this oh, is something that, that we are bringing over the areas. There's people from Austria watching us right now, Link. That's awesome. And you know what? It's something in the United States. The painters always say, hey, we should have like a painter's Olympics. And you guys do it. And, and in Europe, there actually is a paint skills competition <laughs> that we should be doing kind of like the Davis Cup where we should be making an American team and a Brazilian team and we should be heading over there and representing. That's it. That's it. There's a, there's a kind of competition actually in, in, in England as well. They call it as a skill show. And I have a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, who is, who is about to send me all the documents for me to take a look and start a kind of project like that here in Brazil as well. So and there, there's something here, the, the people staying in Portuguese, I have to say something for them. Just, just a minute, mm -hmm. please. No, go right ahead. Pessoal, é, ok, o Nick, o Nick tá falando o seguinte, que mesmo com todas as dificuldades que nós temos, é, nós temos algo incrível, que é aquele poder de persuasão, né? Aquele, aquela vontade, aquele desejo que nós temos é, de transformar. Mesmo com todas as dificuldades que não são impostas da indústria, não, não temos as ferramentas ideais para isso, mas ele, ele, ele consegue absorver essa energia do povo brasileiro né, e transformar isso em resultados práticos, práticos com aquilo que ele já possui lá. Então, assim, ele falou que ele tem trabalhado muito. Bom, nós temos é, conversado muito. Né? Eu tenho aí uma, uma, uma possibilidade, talvez, do Nick poder vir é, ao Brasil algum dia. Né? Estamos já pensando nisso para que a gente que, quebramos aí algumas barreiras, aí, alguns paradigmas aí já de um longo período de tempo. Né? Então, eu acredito que nós estamos no caminho certo, né? os profissionais estão no caminho certo, e eu acho que vai render muitos bons frutos para nós. Well said. I couldn't have said it any better myself. That's it, Nick. Uh, I was explaining them the, the way that you use the energy that comes from Brazil, that you use these impractical results with every single thing that you have in your country. Uh, all the industry partnership, all the kind of stuff that you get this energy, even if you don't speak Portuguese. People here are saying that you, even that you don't speak Portuguese, you get to take care of every single way you can translate Portuguese. They, they, they appreciate it very much, Nick, very much. You have no idea about that. Well, absolutely. And you know what? Thank you for being my link to that world. And uh, I really appreciate our friendship over the last year or so. And uh, yeah, this is, I'm very excited for, uh, for what's coming. And uh, just know that all of us in the United States, especially, you know, the PDCA, all, uh, all the other people in our industry, we're watching you guys and we're seeing your enthusiasm. And there has to be something we can do together. Uh, this is just We, we, we're all working together, and it seems like we should, you know, get our fingers into each other, and let's start uh, collaborating a little bit. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we are on the way, Nick. We are on the way. Both of us are working hard for that. Believe that every single minute is thinking about that and all the kind of projects that we're having to get through. But every single second that I have to take to do something about this, I do. So believe me, we are going to do that in a very soon time. Hey, I'm looking forward to that, and uh, congratulations on the brand new baby, by the way, Ronnie, and uh, have a great weekend. <laughs> okay, absolutely, Nick. Thank you very much. So take care of yourself, and keep on moving on your great show, my friend. Bow tarde, my friend. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm getting ready to head off on a plane here. I'm going to make sure the apprentices need from me uh, what they what they need before I head out. But thank you guys so much. This is so fun. Could you imagine getting on here talking about business, talking about coding science, seeing a job site, talking to somebody in Brazil? I mean, this doesn't get any better. So uh, this is the full realization of the Ask a Painter show, and I couldn't I couldn't have <laughs> dreamt in my wildest dreams that it would be this fun to do with this sort of variety and stuff. So everybody, have a great weekend. This is an absolute pleasure for, pleasure for me to do. The kindest thing you can do is share this with other people. Let's get everybody on board. This is a forum where we can exchange information. Let's work to raise the standard of all the trades in the entire world. We'll talk to you soon.